What's up, Colorado Realtors? I'm Scott Peterson, and thank you for joining me for another edition of Legal Bites. It is uh, the 14th of August, Friday the 14th of August, and uh, I have not been uh, doing a lot of these Legal Bites over the last couple of weeks because, uh, frankly, well, to be very candid, you guys wouldn't be watching them anyhow. Uh, you're out doing deals. Uh, the market velocity that I am hearing about in quite literally every market, uh, sub-market in the state, in the metro areas, uh, the mountain communities, resort communities, uh, the velocity of, of activity and transactions has been uh, just consistently overwhelming. And uh, so I keep hearing from, from you guys as I'm talking to you on the hotline and in other places just about how much, uh, how busy you are, how much you got going on. And, and that's really fantastic. I, you know, make hay while the, while the sun shines or whatever the saying is. And, uh, and enjoy it. it. It really defies, from my perspective, uh, so many other things that are going on with, uh, with COVID and everything else. But, um, you know, great news, great signs and indicators, I think, for Colorado as a state and uh, many of our communities within Colorado. And hopefully it just sustains right through uh, going forward because uh, that's a good thing. So that's the reason I haven't been doing Legal Bites because I'm no, I'm no fool. You guys are going to be out making money and not sitting here watching uh, my goofy self do updates for you. Um, also, uh, maybe a little bit more candidly, haven't been doing updates uh, as consistently because things haven't been really changing as consistently, specifically with COVID. And so um, been kind of locked in with the orders and we've got, as, as you guys know, uh, some pretty strict parameters around open houses, but they can be done and showings are, you know, we're back, you know, I think with all the uh, social distancing and other precautions in place. Uh, you know, things have been been pretty consistent. And I think the market has, uh, from my perspective and from what I'm hearing out there, adapted, I think, very well to the the new reality or the current reality, anyhow, of uh, of what we're doing and how we're conducting business. So kudos to you guys for being, uh, being consistent. I, I think generally staying out of trouble, uh, playing by the rules and being safe and, you know, doing all that good stuff. So uh, that's all been good. And I've been, uh, you know, just quietly... Uh, quarantining on my own, twiddling my, th my thumbs and so forth. No, I, I've still been busy and, and uh, car offices are now, you know, back open and, uh, um, and I will get at some point in the next week or so into the studio and do a, another Legal Bites uh, in my normal place of doing it. But this is pretty darn convenient for the time being. So uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, two things uh, pretty quickly. One uh, COVID related and the other not COVID related. Uh, number one is is the eviction order. That is one thing that uh, earlier this week, Governor Polis extended uh, the eviction order from, uh, I think it was August 10th for another 30 days. So that gets us out to uh, September 9th, 10th. I'm not sure, you know, exactly the math, but, uh, and that eviction uh, order essentially says that, you know, it replaces what is normally a 10 day notice to quit with a 30 day notice to quit. And so evictions are just gonna continue to be as they have been, uh, incredibly difficult to get for you investors, property owners, your clients, uh, a seller most specifically uh, in a listing where they're not going to be delivering possession of the premises to the buyer with a tenant in place are going to be delivering it without a tenant. Very, very careful as you're uh, working with your sellers in terms of uh, contracting and, and dealing with possession expectations and possession penalties and timelines and all of those things. So you, you do have to be watching that because we are, uh, you know, now in a 30 day notice period. And then even if we get notice or if, if you're able to, you know, go through the 30 day notice period, it, it's really kind of county by county. And uh, with regard to two things, one is the uh, ability to obtain an FED or uh, a, an eviction hearing within that county court and uh, the timing for that, their willingness to hear them, uh, the judge's perspective as they're ordering or granting evictions. Um, so that's a, a bit of a gray area and it's gonna vary county by county. The other thing that is, uh, I think, gonna be a bit inconsistent is once you get that uh, FED order or the writ of restitution, uh, from the eviction court or judge, you got to go to the county sheriff then and have them carry it out. And I think you're going to see uh, some timing delays and inconsistencies and everything there. So uh, again, if you're if you're a property, uh, if you're a listing broker, you're working with a property owner who's an investor who's trying to sell a property maybe to a buyer who anticipates closing and then taking possession of the premises. Uh, again, 
very, very, very cautious in consulting with your seller regarding uh, timeframes and their ability to do that. Because if you, if you don't deliver the possession consistent with the closing or with the terms of the contract, that can get very expensive very quick for a seller slash a former landlord as it relates to damages to that prospective buyer. As a derivative of that, I'm just going to mention, I, I've been getting some calls from frustrated listing brokers who have been saying, hey, the seller or the, I'm sorry, the, the buyer, the, the, the tenant is not allowing the buyer or the seller to access the property. They're, they are expressing concerns related to COVID. They don't want to allow inspectors in, buyers in, access issues, et cetera. The, the, the reality of it is when a, when a tenant says no to that, they might, may or may not, I don't, I don't know, it depends on the lease, but they are may, may or may not be in, in technically in breach of their lease. But the problem is, is that the landlord's remedy for a tenant's breach of lease is contained in the lease. And that, generally speaking, is damages, but also including uh, the ability to get an eviction. So you're right back to where we started here in the first part of this discussion. It, evictions are just, are and going to remain very, very, very difficult to get for uh, landlords for the foreseeable future. And so... Um, you know, be mindful of that as a listing broker. Uh, the issue isn't just, well, the land, the tenant's in the wrong and they need to give us access and, and this. Uh, it's, it, it really is a much deeper and more complex issue than, than just, well, their lease says they've got to provide access to us, so they have to provide access to, it, to us. It, it's, it's, not, it's not as clear cut as, as, it might, as you might wish it was or as it would be in a non-COVID world. Okay, I'm done talking about COVID. On so many levels, I'm done talking about COVID, but uh, at least for today, uh, I'm done. Uh, the second topic I want to mention to you is uh, trust accounting. Now, I've been talking, well, first of all, I will say that on the hotline over the course of the last five or six weeks, uh, I have had almost as many, if not as many or more uh, calls from uh, you realtors around the state related to the modifications that were made to the uh, trust accounting rules or chapter five of the uh, real estate commission rules. And those went into effect on July 30th, the modifications. And so I'm not going to rehash all of those rules because I've done previous legal bites on that. Um, it, there's, it's been a very hot topic. It, it, information is, is, is abundant and available. Um, what I am going to say is that linked below here or up here or wherever it exists, uh, I'm going to have, uh, have Monica post a link to the division of real estate's FAQs related to the trust accounting rule changes. I think they're outstanding. It's very, very clear. It's, I don't know, five, six pages long. And it really uh, breaks down a lot of the same issues that the division of real, or that uh, the legal hotline has been getting with regard to trust accounting questions. And at the very bottom of that document, there's a, a list that the division, I think, assembled in connection with the division of banking um, of, of financial institutions in the state that actually have the types of accounts that you are required to have as a licensee when it comes to holding security deposits or really any money that belongs to others, uh, it's gotta be held in trust. And again, I don't need to rehash all of those rules. I think you guys have heard me talk about them before. And if you haven't, then you can look back to some uh, earlier versions of Legal Bites where I've uh, spoken about those. But this uh, FAQs just came out a week or week and a half ago. And again, click on that link. If you've got specific questions, I think it's a very good document. And, and the biggest question I've probably had is, my bank doesn't know what the heck I'm talking about when it comes to a trust account. What do I do? Well, there is a list of financial institutions at the very back end of that uh, Division of Real Estate FAQ document. I would encourage you to check out. But the rule is in place as of July 30th. So... Uh, you do have to make sure that if you're a property, if you're a licensee, realtor, property owner, and you're holding money that doesn't belong to you for any reason whatsoever, even totally unrelated to real estate, it needs to be held in a trust account and uh, check that out. All right. I'm going to quit with that. Uh, wish everybody a very happy weekend. I, I really do hope that we can continue this great market velocity. You guys can stay uh, busy. And, uh, and we can continue because as, as you guys know, the, one of the, the front end drivers of, of our economy and what will ultimately become uh, our recovery within this economy is you guys and real estate transactions and all the uh, fantastic derivative good stuff that you guys do in deals does for everybody out there. So keep, uh, keep it up, keep your chins up, and um, we will see you again on a, another edition of Legal Bites. Have a great weekend, guys. Thanks so much.